Well, I think what's exciting for whoever like me has been uh, interested in uh, physiological assessment of lesion severity for yes. almost 20 years. Yes. Because here we had presented side by side the two largest trials in the field. There have been important trials that have led to the inclusion of uh, FFR, for instance, into the European guidelines and some with class 1A indications like FAME, like FAME 2. But here we have double the size of those trials and again two of them presented together. I think the other interesting point is that one is a sort of conventional trial, a normal trial with a CRO and uh, the way you normally assess them. It was them. multinational. It was, it was uh, definitely the largest the in flare. this field, the fine flare, while Sweetheart, uh, slightly smaller, was a national trial but uh, managed to capture a large deal of patients included in the Sweetheart registry and uh, of course uh, seeing uh, a sort of uh, uh, trial nested into a registry that is a natural trend to capture more real life patients uh, is uh, interesting because you may expect a difference between again conventional trial and this new sort of registry. Okay, so uh, these two trials. running in parallel yes. are very interesting answering or trying to address the same question for the sake of cardiologists who are not so familiar with IFR, just summarize what it is. So IFR is a new index which is measured in uh, diastole and uh, the algorithm calculate uh, the difference between and it's based pressure, on the pressure in the difference the aorta and uh, a, a distal to the stenosis yes. and uh, uh, instead of using the mean difference across the entire uh, um, uh, systodiastolic period limits itself to the time when you have maximal flow which is the And you avoid the need to use adenosine. This uh, is what uh, uh, Justin Davis, who has been somehow the inventor at the Imperial College of yes. this index, uh, has uh, suggested. I was somehow conflicted, having been one of the investigators in the initial validation trial and also co-investigator in Defined Flare, but I'm very pleased that, in my view, he finally succeeded okay. to confirm so, it. So, what are the key findings of these two trials? In, in my understanding, there's a lot of consistency. I think they are, they are. Maybe should we start briefly to say what yes. is the design and the methods? 2,500 patients roughly in Define Flare, 200 in Sweet Art. 2,000. 2,000, sorry, in, in uh, Sweet Art. Uh, IFR Sweet Art, uh, to, to use the, the precise name. Uh, you have uh, enrollment of uh, patients who are the real. Uh, target for this uh, type of assessment, patients having intermediate lesion severity, 40 to 70 percent diameter stenosis, uh, a visual assessment, and uh, um, you have a majority of patients with stable lesion in both trials, a bit more so in uh, defined flare, which had only 15 percent unstable. 3% STEMI patients, right. but around 40% of patients on the contrary had unstable syndrome, including ST elevation MI in Sweetheart. Uh, you uh, uh, go ahead to perform a measurement with a pressure wire distal to the stenosis using in half of the patient's FFR and the cut uh, off point uh, of uh, 0.8, which is uh, traditionally accepted, and in half of the patients, IFR, which has on the contrary a cutoff point of 0.89. So yes. whenever you have 0.89 or below, you perform an intervention, and uh, 0.90 or above, you do not. Okay. So this was the design of the trial. Terrific. So, Carlo, the key findings? Well, key findings, there is a combined endpoint of uh, uh, all cause deaths, myocardial, non fatal myocardial infarction, and urgent revascularization uh, that was very similar in the two groups at 6.8 and 7.1%. Also, the different components of these endpoints were similar in so the two groups. So, it met non inferiority 
uh, prior uh, boundaries. Absolutely, there was uh, the, the number of patients enrolled was powered to find a, a difference of 3.4 percent, and as you see, there was no difference and at all. There was fewer totally vascularizations, I think, with the IFR. Uh, absolutely, you point out that uh, the, this was achieved despite the uh, two uh, measurements did not lead to the same conclusion in, in all patients. Of course, this is not a, a comparison in all patients of the two, half were randomized to one and half to the other, but it is obvious that there is around a 20% less incidence of a positive a, 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 a ischemic index if you use IFR compared with FFR.